Yeah. So, we're at the side door, or past the side entrance to the GP160. And the building, as you know, had come under artillery fire from O'Connell Bridge primarily. Incendiary shells had landed on the building, the building had gone under fire, so it became no longer tenable to stay, to stay inside. So the volunteers gathered at the side door here, and the first act of the evacuation was what's referred to as the Oratory Charge. Natalie emerged from the door, weighing 20 volunteers, and made his way up here to the, to the main, main exit and through the roof of the Now there was a, there was a machine gun post up at Cable Street, a British machine gun post, firing down. And they were also in the tower of Amin Street, now Connolly Station, firing this one. <coughs> so effectively this was a sniper's out. So when the rally emerged, they gingerly made their way up here to the corner of Moor Street and Henry Street. They stepped over a barricade, a makeshift barricade, and made their way down towards, with the view to getting into Parnell Street towards the William and Woods factory, that was the aim, because they were aware that British forces were more or less had gathered on this side of, of uh, Henry Street. Yeah. So the, the route of escape was to be to Williams and Woods in this direction. So the O'Reilly found out each side of the street, 20 volunteers, and made their way gingerly up the street towards the barricade. The British eventually opened fire. Now, when this was happening, Sean McLaughlin, a volunteer who'd be coming on uh, duty between Mendicity and the GPO and courier, as a courier, he was aware of the British, uh, that the British were beginning to circle the entire area. When he heard the Orahi had gone down towards Parnell Street, he rushed across to stop him through this laneway here because he knew he was heading directly into, into enemy territory. So McLaughlin ran, he was only 20 years of age, an extraordinary character, he'd forgotten here all of our history. He ran down here, turned left, and as he turned left he heard machine gun fire and realised the Arati had been cut down, or that the, the, the British had yeah, been the the video, yeah. at Sausage at the centre and attack. And as he turned to come back, most of the garrison had followed him, led by Michael Collins, the out, out of here. Out of here. They were rushing down. The door was about there at yeah. the time. So they were rushed straight across here. Under fire, there was thick black smoke. You can to see your hand in front of yeah. So when McLaughlin turns, most of the garrison have now emerged into this lane. How many of them were that? It, well, big uh, numbers differ. Generally speaking, between two and three hundred people emerged from the jeep. They were all in here? All, well, not all. A lot went that way, yeah. following the O'Reilly to be met by fire up there and came back again. But generally but speaking, most garrison. of the garrison emerged into the, safe, into the safety of this lane. Yeah. So we retraced their, their forces. So uh, incidentally, the Jim, just to point out the, the house where the proclamation was signed. Well, yeah, 21. Uh, I don't know if you know 21 up there is where the proclamation was signed. Yeah. Uh, there's a black on the building. Yeah. So we, we normally would stand. So the Gutman turns to see most of the garrison heading his way for yeah. safety because once they got in here they're out of a line of, of direct fire, even though there's artillery fire, but they're out of direct fire in, in, in the sense of machine gun fire. So they think they're safe, well they are safe for the moment, until they come around the corner down here and where, where Moor Lane meets Henry Place, they yeah. get fire again. Now this is the first important bit here. This is the that was then the O'Brien's Mineral Water Works building. This is the rear of it here. So we're seeing what the volunteers, apart from the smoke at the time, but we're retracing the route and seeing more or less the buildings that were there at the time. So this is the O'Brien's right. Mineral Water Works building. Yeah. Very first important day. What cottage is allowed here at well, the time? How are you doing? So we come around here and we're still safe from direct fire. Okay, Even though there's a machine gun fire on the other side of the street. Oh, oh well, Henry Street, we yeah. can't go the Henry Street direction because we, yeah, there are enemy forces there. And what we don't realise is that when we get to this corner here, there's another. There's a machine gun post up at the end of your lane. Okay. Yeah. And the minute they see movement here, they open fire. Not alone, not alone from the machine gun post, but from the roof of the tunnel, there are snipers, a sniper's nest. On the roof of the, On the, roof yeah. of the rotunda. So, the volunteers reach here and they come under heavy fire. The 
fire is so intense from the machine gun toast that it's ricocheting off what's called what was known as the white house. Right. The volunteers stop and they, they assume that there's enemy, that the, there are enemy troops holding this building because the fire is so intense. They think the fire is coming from the building. So there's panic here. They don't know what to do. So McLaughlin and Michael Collins are in to see if there's any enemy troops in there. They discover the building's end. They occupied the O'Brien's mineral water bin. Oh, John so McLaughlin. There's a door here somewhere. Double doors here. Yeah. McLaughlin orders a motor van to be taken and placed across here for cover. Yeah. So they push a motor van across here and now they've got cover to cross again. Has the 20 year old taken charge? The 20 year old takes charge. Uh, at this stage, Pierce, Conley, Plunkett have arrived here. Sean McDermott arrives and they're trying to restore order. McLaughlin's the one who, 20 years of age, who emerges out of, yeah. out of the panic and, and takes, effectively takes charge. And Connolly's so impressed by him that he eventually appoints him, because Connolly's out of action at this stage, he's wounded in the middle of the roadway, and he actually gives him his command. So a 20 year old becomes the general of the double And effectively, as it was written in the history no, afterwards, McLaughlin's from a Dublin family, they were involved in Larkin and setting up the union, sort of a trade union background. Um, so De Valera wasn't the last surviving comic, John McLaughlin was. You know, De Valera was known to be the last surviving comic. So where were we? We're at the White House, there's now a barricade here and there's comparative safety. So yeah, volunteers can now get to the They're coming years. around. Yeah. Some of them make their way over the roofs here, back towards Henry Street, yeah. only to be, to be forced back to the fire. And well, the GPO. Jim Ryan and others get up on the roofs here and try and go that way. No, they come back. So their next sanctuary is between here and Moore Street itself. So they move on here mm -hmm. with the barricade. But they're trapped again here at this corner because there's another machine gun, the machine gun post that effectively at this stage has, has um, forced the O'Reilly charge back yeah. and wounded O'Reilly. Is active at the far end of um, the. The British would have known there were two or three hundred people in this. No, they were shot.